Connaught Street, Port Talbot, lived a man as Welsh as they come, and with a voice to match. Hush, the babies are sleeping, the farmers, the fishers, the tradesmen and pensioners, cobbler, schoolteacher, postman and publican, the undertaker and the fancy woman, drunkard, dressmaker, preacher, policeman, the webfoot cockle women, and the tidy wives. That valley's bred voice could only belong to the actor Richard Burton, and he first learned its full power out here on the hills, above the coal and steel town of Port Talbot. But when he first roared into life in 1925, it was not as a Burton, but a Jenkins. Richard was born one of 12 into a Pontrediffin mining family. When his mother died later in childbirth, he was sent away from an alcoholic father to his sister, Cecilia. Here, in Caradoc Street, Cis gave him the one-on-one -on -one attention he craved. But this didn't go down well in his new home, as Richard's old friend Betty remembers. The husband didn't get on very well with Richie. I think there was a bit of jealousy. I think, I think his wife made more fuss of Richie than he did, and that's what we thought at the time, at any rate. Richard left home, and at 16, he was taken in by his English teacher and mentor, Philip Burton, from whom he'd later take his name. It was Master Burton who'd help Richard develop that extraordinary voice in the parlour here at Connaught Street. Betty's mother was their landlady. Mother used to go and bang on the door, will you boys be quiet, please? <laughs> Philip used to give him tuition about how to speak properly and to try and get rid of the Welsh accent, which he had, you see. So they got on very, very well. When it was all a bit too much for the neighbours, the hillside! What better way to learn voice projection? <laughs> From the Welsh Hills to the Hollywood Hills, via a rave success on Broadway, Richard signed to 20th Century Fox and became one of the highest earning movie stars of the 60s. To Capitol, in 1964, he married the other big star of the decade, Elizabeth Taylor. You are such a simp. Two years later, in Warner Brothers' Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, their fiery portrayal of a marriage hitting the rocks was praised by the critics much of it inspired by their marital problems off the set. Liz won an Oscar, but Richard would be nominated seven times during his career. A far cry from the early days in the steel and coal town of Port Talbot. Richard's schoolboy diaries held in Swansea University's Burton archives show he was already destined for greater things. I was struck by the determination and the character that comes out of the pages. He's interested in, in drama. There's about 40 mentions of Richard going to the cinema. He's going almost every week. I think, you know, the cinema was an exciting window onto the world for Richard. Despite his later stardom, Wales never left him. Well, by God, James Joyce was right. There is one place you do belong to, and it is, in my case, the place where I came from, which is Pontevedra. Stick for stick and stone for stone, Blade of grass for blade of grass, virtually the same exactly as it was when I was a child. The coal that once poured out of Port Talbot has all but stopped, but it still churns out great actors. Anthony Hopkins is from here, and so too the young Michael Sheen. Who's to say there won't be more? Mind you, it would be rather hard to match that voice. Burton died at 58. Vodka and 60-plus cigarettes a day hadn't helped. He was buried in a Welsh red suit with Dylan Thomas poems by his side. There's talk of a blue plaque in Connaught Street to this Welsh legend. Here's one to be going on with. Come on, what did you open? You just opened something. Sorry, you were just I, saying. Uh, there was a blue plaque. Seeing that blue plaque then, there's a blue plaque on the first house that Richard lived in in London, in Hampstead, yeah. um, which I was asked to unveil. 
um, on the, the morning after I opened in Hamlet, and a, a part that Richard had played oh, as well. Yeah. Do you have a blue plaque in Patalbert? I don't have a blue plaque. Not yet. No. Well, he's not dead yet. I have some oh. dirty pavement stones. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the main criteria for that one. <laughs> I see. Yeah. <laughs> OK, well, let's move on anyway. How much of a hero was yeah, Richard Burton to you, Michael? He's <laughs> got a blue shirt on. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, yeah, I've drawn a little blue plaque and stuck it on myself. Um, uh, yeah, he was a huge, huge influence, you know, coming from a town where Burton Hopkins, yes. Anthony Hopkins as well, came from. They've produced some gems. Patel. Yeah, yeah. Um, some incredibly successful people and talented people, as well as Rob Brydon. Um, but, uh, <laughs> I'm so pleased with yeah, that mention. Yeah. Of course you're a friend of his, so yeah, you can say course, that. I am, yeah. I but, hope. yeah. A massive influence, not just as an actor, but also just as someone who came from the town who did very well. Because, you know, coming from a town like Port Albert, people not necessarily feeling that confident about, you know, people being interested in them. And uh, so someone coming from there, like Richard Burton, massive influence. Now, a biopic is begging. Surely you must have had chats about a biopic of Richard Burton, you playing the main Yeah, role. I have. Um, I was just saying to Kirsty, it's, it's a, you know, it's a tough thing to play someone who does what you do. Mm. But does it better. Yeah, but you don't mind tough, do you? I, I, I don't mind. I don't mind tough. I, you know, that voice. Can I just say, Michael just did the voice while that film was on. It was unbelievable. Yeah. It was un Will you do it? But that charisma, it? that, you know, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> just, it was... No, it's, it's just, you know, you hear, you, you hear those tones. Oh, yeah. It's very hard to, uh, you know, <laughs> replicate that. But, um... <laughs> Is there a it's one thing to do that. It's another thing to kind of embody that man. Is, is that... somebody writing the script for this? I believe there is there is a script, but I, I, I honestly I would like to develop something myself one day, maybe to do something. But because you know, I think also something that affected Richard was coming from a town like Patalbot and then going to Hollywood. And and once you've left a town like Patalbot very hard to feel like you totally belong again afterwards once you've done other stuff mm. and also feel like you don't totally belong in Hollywood because you come from somewhere like Patel. But so I think I, I kind of identify with certain aspects of yeah. that. Okay. So I'd like to explore that kind of thing. And of course, you went back to Patalbert to do The Passion. Yes. And that you came in actually, didn't you, last year um, That's to talk right. about it? So, mm. 2,000 people from Patalbert took part with you in this play. We've got some footage here. Yeah, it was a non stop 72 hour performance. One performance lasted for three days non stop over the Easter weekend. 2,000, over 2,000 local people involved with putting it on. Um, and it began with about 200 people watching what happened on the beach Good Friday morning at about dawn and ended on the Sunday night with 15,000 people standing around around about watching the uh, the end of the show. It was a sort of life-changing experience. Yeah. And I know, Chris, you were, you were incredibly supportive. Oh, no, it was, yeah, it was amazing. It How could you not be? Amazing. You, lo you love to push the boundaries, you know. Mm. Uh, what, what's next? What's in that crazy mind of yours? There must be something simmering away. It's hard to know what to, you know where to go after Well, you're playing that, football really. in, yeah. in playing 90 football. degrees heat exactly. on Sunday. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> 15,000 people was not enough, so I'm going for 70,000 people okay. at Old Trafford <laughs> Sunday night. We're going to talk about that later. Yeah, Kirsty, we'll come on to you, because the, you're here to talk about...